Yes, I'm Wes Jones, and this is Gaming Up Geography. So what is this exactly? Well, I had the privilege at Esri on working on this book called Locator's Adventure in South America. Uh, I worked with Kyle Bauer and Colin Connor, and I was in charge of the illustrations and drawing the activities. And so a little bit more about the book. Yeah, it's an Esri Press book. It's a middle grade book, a chapter kind of activity book. It's definitely got a story, but there's a lot of activities in it, maybe 25 or so. And the whole goal is to introduce spatial thinking to a, a younger audience. And now I have kids this age, so before like things like Lexile stuff didn't mean anything to me, it clearly does now. So here's some more for information for those parents who know what Lexile stuff means. As far as that spatial thinking and things we want to introduce, like there's a ton of things obviously that go into geography and GIS. And I'm not going to read through all these, but like suitability and you do some orienteering and this topographic maps and things like that. So we're trying to introduce these things to kids in a way that they could understand and just get those ideas into their mind a little bit. So as far as the activities, that's what I'm going to talk about almost entirely. The activities had to be fun and engaging for the age group. They need to be informative and we wanted to base them all on real world places. That was really important to us. So real scenarios, real animals, real places. They needed to work on paper, which is always interesting because so much of what we do now is on GIS, and so it's interesting pulling back a little bit and going back into paper. And my personal goal is I didn't want these to go on top of imagery. Imagery is great and it's easy to do something, but I actually found that it was, first of all, it was going to be hard to do an activity on top of imagery, and I thought, let's try and make it a pure like drawing exercise for myself. So I'll go through four different examples. So the first one here, this is in the Andes, and we were looking for chinchilla habitat because they're endangered in the area, which is kind of amazing because there are pets everywhere here, but they're endangered. And so the adventure has these kids going up this mountain, and they've got to find the route to get up here. Now, here's my first attempt at this, and I actually quite like it, but it didn't really fit, and I'll tell you for a couple of reasons, but you know, I drew the mountain sort of, and I had them find their way up the mountain, kind of through the shadows. And I think I might use this elsewhere, so sometimes you know, a, a subtle failure actually will work other ways better, but it clearly doesn't match my drawing style. I'm way too cartoony. So here's another example of some of the pages in the book. And so I had to rethink that, and we had to come up with, okay, we need a color, color theme for all of these. And it really did have to ma match my cartoony style, because it did, it did start, my, my activity started, you know, looking like they didn't really belong. So I had to rethink that. And so here is a sloth looking at the old one. Actually, by the way, I don't know, they should have made like, instead of teddy bears, like sloths as, as stuffed animals, because they're, they're way cuter, especially like they put their arms around you. My, my, my wife bought like seven of them. I'm supposed to give them away to all their family members and they're, she didn't, they're all in our house now. But anyway, so here's what I did. I went and I went and drew this, it matched the style. But our first question was, well, it's clearly a maze, and is that too simple? Well, we, we did this exercise with a lot of kids, and it turned out that they actually really understood that this was, they're trying to find their path up this mountain, especially when one of the activities we have an avalanche and the path changes. So they actually started thinking about, yeah, it's a maze, but actually I'm trying to find the best path up the mountain. So we did a lot of, um, exercises with the kids and just to see, okay, which ones work, which ones don't. They're brutally honest, which is great and not great. <laughs> so the next one is deforestation. So we're trying to find jaguar habitat. And so how do you take this in and make this into a game? Well, I made it into a grid and grids turn out to be really useful, especially when you're needing to do counting and things like that. So here you're trying to find the largest intact um, forest, and then you identify that as jaguar habitat. And you know, it's pretty simple, but you know, some kids got it wrong, didn't count the right squares, and most of them got it, but it turned out to be this was a pretty good activity. And it mimicked the area well enough. Obviously, some artistic liberties were taken, but it mimicked it well enough. Uh, this is the first activity in the book, and it was interesting because I wasn't sure what to do with this for all. We had the characters crash in the mountains in the north, and they had to make their way down to the river. So how do you make that into an activity that's, you know, interesting enough? And so I tried to, with this, to keep the essence of the area. So you've got the mountains in the north. And I, even with the river in the south, I tried to keep the bend there a little bit. And that area in the middle, there's tons of rivers. So I took, obviously, some artistic liberty there. But 
Again, we weren't sure if this was going to be too easy, actually. And so there's a crash site in a camp, and there's different ways to go about this. Well, what we found is half the kids got it wrong right away. They just went to the right and went down and around, and they looked down and said, like, oh, I got it wrong. And it was actually a great introductory activity because they checked the answer in the back, and they're like, oh, I've actually got to look at all the paths. And so that one really surprised us. And that was why you know, doing this feedback with the kids was really helpful. And then this activity here was with the Galapagos Islands. And when you do any project, you learn a lot about the place. And everyone knows about the tortoises and stuff there. But doing the research, because I had to do a lot of research with each one of these, I didn't realize that the tortoises are really specific to each volcano, the species. So it was a very interesting thing to learn. So you can incorporate those things, obviously, into the stories. But this one, so we're having a fictitious eruption and the lava is going to flow and so how do you make a game out of that? How do you say, okay, how do you identify what tortoises are in trouble, where the lava is flowing? So I did this approach and I don't know if you can see it quite on the screen, but there's a grid here and they all have numbers and so at the highest I think there's nine going down to one and you have to sort of map that way down so if there's an eight here you have to go by the seven, you have to map your way to make this lava flow work. Um, this one we had some really good feedback because I made it way too hard at first and it still stayed challenging But it was the last activity in the book and the kids they seemed to like working up to this one as the challenging one and yeah, it was um, it was an Interesting thing. We have a, another one here too where you have a second lava flow as well actually But so so that's the activities this this book has been well supported by Azure, which is really nice So there's activity pages you can print out so you don't even have to draw in the book if you don't want. And a couple of uh, schools have taken it up and with their class and it's been well received, so that's been really nice. And as far as this, they were nice enough to give a discount code if you're interested um, through the, I don't know what store that is, the, I guess through the Azure Press store. And for me, the most exciting part is it's done well enough that I actually get to work on a second one. And so, right, actually when this conference ends, I get to start drawing and working on activities. We're going to Oceana. We're gonna have some sonar stuff, some really neat, fun new activities. And yeah, that's about it. That's how I gamed up some geography. Thank you.